here it is, the brain of the engine. Huh? Huh? Oh yeah, so here it is, this is what I got. So this is the back of the cam, and the grind number is called GFY. If you don't know what GFY stands for, then GFY. So this is 229, 235 on a 110 LSA. Maybe I'd said this before, who knows, I've been kind of doing this over a very long time. We're going to get this out. Uh, I did change things to an LS firing order. It's not going to make any more power. It's just it's just nicer on the rods. That's all it does. Uh, and, I'm, you know, I'm running a system that will allow me to do that. So we're going to put this in, and we're going to degree the cam. And last week, I did this cylinder head set it up, and you've noticed this is the even side. On the odd side... I left off a few of these springs. I got them right there. I put in setup springs so that way we can I can show you a few different deals as far as uh, you know retainer to seal clearance. Um, you know obviously coil bind, but coil bind I will show you on those also too. I've already checked these, but I'll show you how to check spring pressures if you have the ability to, as far as the installed height, so on and so forth, because that's what I've done before. Right now, I'm I've set up this. I'm going to get TDC as far as the top, but since I've got this set up, I will show you one thing that I always check, and that is piston rock. Let's see if I can get this in here. So right now, let's get this to zero. It's pretty damn close, but there's zero. And then this is your piston rock, because you got to take this into account. So I got about, uh, let's call that about, 18 and a half, 18 and a half thousandths of piston rock. I take that into account whenever I'm doing, that's eh, not going to focus, who knows. Uh, but I, it's about 18 and a half, 18. I've tested all, all of them already. I wrote it all down. So that way, when you're doing the piston and valve clearance, you can do that. I don't do the clay method. I do the valve drop method. Here's a little tip. I'm trying to put it in so that way you don't nick bearings, put this in there. That way you can hold it here and then leverage it up there so you can use two hands to put these in. It, it just helps out getting it over that last little bearing. That way you can just put it in. Really simple, nice little tip. Comes out. No fuss, no muss. There we go. Here's something else that you need to do is check your end play. I pulled it all the way out with a screwdriver and then I set it to zero and then I'm going to push it in. So we got about six thousandths, and that's totally within spec. I call them between like three and like hundred and something thousand. So uh, it's brand new, it's brand new, it's brand new, so it's gonna be a little tight. So yeah, it's good, there it is. A little quickie. Here's another little trick, is that I, I lay the chain flat, pull it out so this way you know it's exactly halfway. I'll mark these two here. So anyways, line the chain up, do this, and then on this here, I'm going to make a mark right there because once this thing's in there, then I'll know. So then if I went after I degree it, if I need to go advance two degrees, retard two degrees, I'll do the same thing. Is that I'll erase that and then I'll mark the new mark. So that way I know exactly where that one goes when it goes into here. So that way I know if I'm lined up. Also too, I do the same thing here is I mark that. So that way when I put the timing chain on, I know I'm exactly right. That way I'm not fiddling, fumbling with it and it's in there. Little tip trick. All right, I'm gonna try to do this sideways here. But the first thing you wanna do is just kind of guess where TDC is by, you know, obviously I wanna go in the backwards first and then in the rotation of engine. And then I'm at an angle here, but I'm gonna guess somewhere right around there back up here and take a look. No, I'm going to call that good. I'm going to call that guess. So now I'm going to go in opposite direction and do 50 thousandths drop. And then I'm going to come forward, engine rotation direction, tap, 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 try to get to 50 thousandths. Should be between 11 and 12 or 13 or something like that. Okay, so what do we have here? i got to get back here. That's right around 12. And then direction rotation. It's pretty close. We're going to see what happens here. I think, I think I might have nailed it the first time. That'd be odd. That'd be the first ever. 
There we go. I would say, wow. I think I nailed that. First try. Wow, that's 12. Okay, so we nailed it. Perfect. So we know exactly TDC is set up. So then I can back up. I'm going to back up and bring this in right to TDC. It should be pretty close to right around there. Yeah, it's hard to see. That should be TDC. So you guys can see it. That's TDC. So that way we know that the crankshaft to the piston and this line is set up perfect. So then we can start degreeing the camshaft. All right, I'm going to get that all set up and I'm going to go from there. Okay. Take 53. I've been it's just a joke. The kids have come in here about 10 times. So anyways, so the whole idea of this is to get to as close to max lift and set it to zero. So let's move to max lift, see where we're at. And there's no way I'm not, that was just a guess. I swear to you that was a guess. So then I'm going to back up. Now I'm using really sloppy uh, trays for the for the lifters in there. So now the idea is to come up to fifty thousandths before. So we're at fifty thousandths before. That looks like sixty-seven point five. So let's type that in. Then we're going to come to max lift. That's a little past, but it's not really going to make much of a difference because we're going to be getting on the other side of both of them. Sometimes it needs a little help because these are retaining style trays for the lifters. And let's see what we got. And that's 50 thousandths there. So we're going to go 67 plus 40. One, so 140, no, I can't see it here. That is 46, 146 plus 146 equals, divide that by two, and we come up with 106.75. I want to be at 108. So we're going to uh, take this bolt out. We're going to go to two degrees as far as retarded, and we're going to try it again. So let's do it like that. One second. All right, we're going to try it again. Hopefully you guys can see this. So we should be pretty close to... So we're coming up. Make sure that we're still set up for max. It's pretty close. Let's do it right there. So let's back up. Okay, back up, because we want to go in forward rotation, forward rotation, let's call it there, so that is 69, 69 plus, and Max lift. Uh, there we go. Uh, 
Oh. Okay, what do we got? That is 45, 47 and a half plus 147 plus 5 equals divide by 2. Boom. 108.25. That's exactly where I want to be. So we're going to lock this down. I'm going to torque that to 90 uh, foot pounds. And this cam is degreed in. So that, that's how you degree camshaft. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, it goes really easily. And it's, it's, it's simple, simple, simple things to do. Anyways, there it is. Alrighty. Bye-bye. Always soak your lifters at least overnight minimum. Uh, you'll see them coming up. Maybe I waited too long. But, yeah, you can see the bubbles coming up. That's going to be, it's going to take a while. Now, I, I soak everything. Everyone can, you know, has their own little thing. I soak mine in ATF. It's a high detergent. It gets inside there really easily. Um, it cleans, so it's a cleaning agent, and it cleans it without, you know, putting like a solvent in there. So that's the oil pump I'm running, 10342HV. So this is the stock 6.1 style of oil pump. I don't know if you can read that right there, but that is 497 as far as the thickness of that. So this part number for this pump here, exactly a hundred thousandths bigger, 99 thousandths bigger, let's call it, whatever, if you want to be a precision. So yeah, let's just round it up to a hundred thousandths bigger as far as the pump. So that's where the high volume comes in is it's thicker. And that's where these little spacers come into account right here um, as far as standoff. So yeah, this is the oil pump that I'm going to use. Uh, it, it does come with two different springs. 65, uh, I believe, is one. And the one that's in there, 60. I'm going to go with the 65-pound one just because I am going to spin this thing up to about 7,000. And I'm hoping that I can get at least 70 PSI of oil pressure when I'm up near that RPM level. Uh, if not is what it is and if it's too high then I can just change it back to the other one.